I now give the floor to the representative of the Syrian Arab Republic. Shukran. Thank you, Mr. President. At the outset, I would like to congratulate you on assuming the presidency of the Security Council this month. I would also like to thank your predecessor, His Excellency the Ambassador of Gabon, for his efforts during his presidency of the Security Council last month. Mr. President, my delegation joins member states of this Council, those states that have expressed their surprise that the Security Council returns to discussing this issue in less than two weeks in the absence of any developments that require it. This approach is a waste of the time and resources of this organization. Why do a few countries insist on ignoring the calls of the majority of Council members to rationalize the Council's time and resources? Would it not have been more useful for the Council to hold a session on the negative effects of the unilateral coercive measures imposed by the United States and the European Union against the Syrian people to highlight their inhumane consequences as they have a catastrophic effects on the daily lives of Syrians and the fulfillment of their basic needs. Shouldn't we hold these countries accountable for their crimes against the Syrian people since 2011 and until now? Mr. President, Western countries frantically insist that the Council hold this debate only to repeat the same accusatory narratives against Syria. This is irresponsible, unacceptable, and incompatible with their obligations under the United Nations Charter, namely the obligation to maintain international peace and security. The false accusations made by these countries against Syria have no legal or professional basis. They are completely rejected and are merely part of the hostile political campaigns that these countries have been waging against my country, as I said, since 2011 until now, with the aim of undermining security and stability in Syria and destroying its resources. Mr. President, my delegation deplores the pervasive politicization of the work of the OPCW, which had reached a point of allowing a fundamental distortion of the provisions of the Chemical Weapons Convention. In this context, my delegation reiterates the position of the Syrian Arab Republic on the illegality of establishing the so-called investigation and identification team and reiterates its total refusal to recognize this team and its erroneous and unprofessional methods of work, which will ultimately lead to invalid conclusions. Mr. President, the Syrian Arab Republic, since its voluntary accession to the CWC, has implemented its obligations even before the Convention's entry into force. And has cooperated in full transparency and openness with the OPCW to destroy all its stockpiles of chemical weapons and their production facilities. In this context, I would like to point out some aspects of cooperation between the Syrian National Authority and the Technical Secretariat of the OPCW. First, 
The Syrian National Authority has persisted in submitting its monthly reports on time to the Technical Secretariat of the OPCW on activities related to the destruction of chemical weapons and their production facilities, the latest of which was report number 107. Second, the Syrian National Authority agrees on a continuous basis to extend the tripartite agreement between the authority, UNOPS, and the OPCW to ensure the facilitation of the organization's work in Syria. The last extension of this agreement was for a period of six months and it expires at the end of this year. Third, the Syrian National Authority facilitated the holding of nine rounds of inspection of the Center for Scientific Studies and Research. The latest report on the eighth round confirmed that there was no activity prohibited under the Convention. It also praised the great cooperation and facilitations provided by Syria to the inspection team during that round. Fourth, over the past nine years, the Syrian National Authority has granted more than 500 entry visas to employees of the Technical Secretariat of the OPCW, including all the organization's teams that worked in Syria. It also facilitated 24 consultations with the declaration assessment team and welcomed the holding of the 25th round of consultations. It also agreed to all the options proposed by the Technical Secretariat of the organization to facilitate the holding of this round while maintaining its principled position regarding the reservations we have about the participation of one expert who, based on experience, has proven to be unprofessional. The Syrian National Authority has repeatedly called on the Technical Secretariat of the OPCW not to disrupt the important work of the Declaration Assessment Team and not to hold it hostage to granting an entry visa to one expert, whose behavior we have reservations about. The OPCW has many more experts that it can deploy. Fifth. The head of the Syrian National Authority had previously held two rounds of high-level consultations with the Director General of the OPCW. And coordination is now underway to hold another high-level meeting according to an agenda that would be agreed upon by two parties by the two parties. We look forward to holding these high-level consultations as soon as possible. Sixth, the Syrian National Authority has spent a lot of time and effort with the Technical Secretariat of the OPCW to jointly review and discuss some issues. But, unfortunately, the organization, the, se the Technical Secretariat of the OPCW, still insists on considering these issues as outstanding, unresolved. The discussions on these issues are still ongoing, and there is no final agreement on their results yet. Therefore, it is reprehensible that some continue to quickly level accusations against Syria. Mr. President, all aspects of cooperation between Syria and the Technical Secretariat of the OPCW, to which I have referred, must be acknowledged. This continued cooperation, in all good faith, 
reflects a responsible behavior of Syria, a country that fulfills its obligations and that has nothing to hide. As for the ingratitude, skepticism, and denial that we've seen from some countries for political purposes that are known to all, they deserve nothing but condemnation and denouncement. Mr. President, before concluding my statement, I would like to state the following. The United States and its Western allies believe that by repeating the same accusations and lies over and over again against Syria, they would make people believe them. To those I say, the truth can not be obfuscated by their misleading statements, by their policies of pressure and distortion, policies that they've practiced, pressure that they've been placing on the Technical Secretariat of the OPCW and Member States. And just by way of example, I would like to state that the US, Britain and France have been obstructing the deployment of the fact-finding mission team in Douma, to Douma in 2018, so that these countries, these three countries, can wage a joint aggression, unjust aggression against Syria. Then they come here and make statements to convince us that they do not interfere in the work of the OPCW. There are many, many more examples of this kind of behavior. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the Syrian Arab Republic for their statement.